Hi everyone, welcome. Um, today this presentation will be about uh, NCLEX uh, and what exams, are, what topics are involved and then based on the structure of the exam uh, we can come up with uh, a study plan. So let's get started. So you can download the template which I have attached on the descriptions and you can modify it according to your study notes. And this presentation is for the purpose of private study and research. I, for this uh, topic, I use Kaplan, UWorld, Registered Nurse, RN, NCSBN, and a few other uh, resources. Firstly, it's important to know what NCLEX RN is and what are they going to test you on, what topics, and how they're going to test you. So, it, so uh, you can go to this website, NCSBN. Uh, they are the one who produce, uh, develop the exam. So you can see the topics, uh, the percentage, the sample questions. They got a few quite interesting uh, sample questions, really helpful. And I just want to highlight that 20% of the exam will, will cover management of care, 15% will, will be about pharmacology and parental role therapist, 14% on physiological adaptation, 12% on reduction of risk potential, safety and infection control, and then rest is 9%, basic care and comfort, psychosocial integrity, health promotions and maintenance. Based on the uh, previous slide, I have come up with a structure to organize the notes. Firstly, on here on this left side, human body systems. Because I have worked as a registered nurse for over 10 years, so my knowledge uh, about different uh, topics are really vague <coughs> because you don't use it, so you lose it. So I have to catch up on them. What I do is I develop them into body system, different body system, and then I go back to oh textbook, videos, and lectures, and then I just sort of read each topics by topics, and then I summarize it first. Once I did that, I move to uh, NCLEX RN here. So all the sum summary here, it's really about NCLEX RN. It's not just a fundamental of nursing, it's about how you uh, transitional from um, just writing the note, uh, ri writing your notes into how the notes gonna apply to the NCLEX RN questions, which I'm gonna develop develop around ten powerpoints and show you how you can do it. To uh, how can you sum summarized <laughs> uh, each topic um, so that it cater the exam. With the final summaries, um, what I do is I do body systems again, but this time rather than like, for example, in the old notes here, the mental health, I will have, let's say 20 pages. But then come, when I come here, I'm just gonna summarize the old notes again and simplify it and uh, just leave me with just two pages may maybe and um, just um, summarize the main point from the old notes. On top of that, afterwards, when you go to do your NCLEX I questions, um, you encounter uh, mental health uh, questions and you made a mistake on it, write it on the mental health uh, system section. For example, if it's talking about depression, under mental health, you say depression, and then the question you trip over, give an explanation um, why you <laughs> didn't get this correct. Is it the contents? If it's the contents, um, gr grab the contents that explain in the um, questions. Now I have some samples of how I did uh, my notes when I look at the NCLEX RN questions. I only sort of 
summarize my questions when when they are really com like some questions are really tricky and complicated and interesting so for example the structure I use here is a timetable again it's much more clear to see <laughs> for example uh, for priority questions uh, here y means yes n means no so that's the answer for these questions so you can write a question down but you don't need to sum like words by words from the question. You can just sort of summarize the question based on your understanding. Again, if you trip over because of one of the um, vocabularies that they use, put that down on the question and highlight, like, highlight that words and uh, find the definition of that. So that next time when you see it again, you know what that means. So this is the answer on middle column. And then the right column is the explanation that you give why the answer it is. Um, so let all that apply, quite similar, except you can have yes, 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 no, no. Okay? Again, middle is the answer, right is the explanation. Uh, who do you see first? Structure quite similar. One, two, three, four, five here. And here's the scenario, and here's the reason why they link it like that. And um, if you do, uh, who do you see first? Let's say you get the first one right, but you got number two and number three wrong. What I usually do is highlight or coloring it or bold it, number two and number three explanation. So that tells you that, that you got it right on one, four, five. It's just two and three that you got tripped over. And by highlighting it, or bold it, then it emphasizes you to focus more. And the next time when you see it, your brain will have a better uh, memories of it. Nursing protocols, um, quite similar. Okay. Now with the final summaries, I'm gonna show you some example of uh, some summarized note that I I put in on my final summary. Let's start with uh, arterial blood gases. So on my final summary documents. The printout version is uh, from the from my old notes, um, and I got it from Registered Nurse RN. She's really good. Uh, I enjoy her video. She talks a lot about uh, quite depth nursing content, which is what I need. And then on the right side, it's my handwritten one. Um, that's because I did a question on arterial blood gases and I made a mistake on it. Then I realized, oh, I cover one side of the topic, but then I need to, uh, the question is asking me on the other point of the, uh, uh, the arterial blood gases. So I just um, covered, covered this area. So when when it comes to the exam you got the old notes and you got the inclex iron questions um sort of answer so i see it as uh, um, a base of knowledge nursing knowledge and the inclex iron question so this is what i want to explain uh, to you you can if you don't some people they like handwritten that's okay some people like it still write it on the computer that's fine too whichever works for you but if you're a hand, uh, handwritten uh, person, then you can, um, I got an erasable ink, so it just work like a um, pencil, um, except it's a pen. You write it, if you make a mistake, there's a rubber here, you can just uh, rub it out. So rather than like uh, throw away the paper, um, if you make a mistake on the word that you've written, then just scribble it. Oh, sorry, just uh, erase it. Okay, another example, respiratory body system. So this is the heading on my final summary. And then under the respiratory, uh, let's say I put a chest tube. Um, and then for this diagram, rather than memorize everything, what I did is um, I just remember the abnormal because abnormal seems uh, less to remember than the normal uh, one. So for suction, if it's vigorous bubbling, abnormal. Water seal chamber, continuous bubbling, leak. Leaking means leaking. So um, I write down leaking because I want to know why it's abnormal. So it's good to know. You can write your explanation on it. Collection, 
um, active bleeding, bright red drainage. This depends on the time frame. Next one, immune body systems. First, I write uh, category them into a heading, uh, see which, uh, what topic belongs to which body system. This one, immunization. This whole timetable is about inactive vaccines. On the far left, I got vaccines, all type of vaccine. On the top, the time frame. And here are the notes that um, I need to know for the inclex iron questions. Again, it's quite similar structure, except this time it's active vaccine here. So uh, for the uh, graph, I put one inactive and one active. The reason I'm doing that is it's going to help me differentiate because the question, inclex iron question, like to ask someone's pregnant, someone with a disease, a uh, certain disease, and uh, are they allowed to take live vaccine? And the scariest thing is um, they like to use select or that apply for this kind of question. They give you a list of, let's say, uh, vaccines, and then someone is pregnant, which one can they have, which one they can't. So that way, if I divide up by inactive vaccine and then active vaccine on another uh, graph, it's easy to see. Another trick I use is, rather than remember RV is two, four, six, I just summarize all together in this three-point form, which gonna pretty much cover most of them. So two to six months, you give everything except hep um, hepatitis um, four months, and then no MMR, varicella zoster, and singles. For 12 months, you give everything except no hep hepatitis, inactive polio, and RV. For, for two to six years, you give IPV, DTAP, MMR, VZV, and that's pretty much it. That's how I remember that. And it's, it does it, it sort of get me through the immunization section. Another one is, uh, again, heading, immune body system, transmission. I category them into airborne droplet contact. And you know standard, which applies to any disease. Washing hands, no matter what kind of disease you're, uh, what kind of uh, disease patient uh, has, you pretty much uh, provide standard care precautions, such as washing hand. Now, air bomb. The doll, usually the question like to say, if someone's on TB, uh, active TB, um, do you leave the door open or do you leave the door closed? So for air bomb, doors closed, where for droplet, they can be open. And the mask-wise, uh, N95 for the staff, surgical mask for patient if they transfer, for example, transfer to x-ray department. For transmission, uh, regular face surgical mask staff within three feet of a client. For this one, contact. They are no mask, but, uh, but wear gloves and gown all the time with contact precaution. But if, but you can wear mask if there's a risk of uh, spill on the face. In regarding to private room, um, the airborne need to have negative private room, while the droplets private room or group with same disease, same as uh, contact. Now for airborne, uh, for this, these two box. I have put astronaut color, uh, I, put, I have put a star on over it. Um, you can sort of see why what they mean. So one star, uh, A bomb, means um, the following disease, disease uh, you have to apply A bomb and contact, such as um, active singles, okay? Uh, like a smallpox, where Two stars, uh, droplets and contact precautions. Of course, standard as well. Uh, droplet contact and example, <coughs> COVID-19, uh, influenza, flu, adenovirus, which is this one. Now, back to here, a bomb, measles, active TB, neutrophils. 
These are just standard. Uh, these are just airborne it, uh, and standard. And same over here. This is for droplet precaution, and here is for the contact precautions. Um, so as I mentioned, all the disease need to provide standard precaution. But also, um, you know how uh, active singles, you need airborne and contact. But for the local singles, you just need a standard precautions. And then TB, active TB, you need airborne. And for the latent TB, you just need standard precaution. So et cetera, et cetera. Another point is 24 hours. So they like to, uh, certain, certain uh, conditions, if you treat it with uh, effective therapy after certain hours, then they are pretty much back to standard precaution. And a good example is impedigo. So no contagious 24 hours after oral antibiotics, 48 hours after topic ointments. Now, what that means is, the incorrect question could ask, saying patient had uh, uh, developed uh, in pedigo, um two days ago, and then they are on oral antibiotics for the last three days. So uh, are you going to put them on contact precautions, or, or should they go back to standard precautions? So, so that's kind of question that they can ask. Now, <coughs> this is what I mean, like we need to know the uh, nursing content, and then how to apply to the questions. Um, this m that's the end of this presentation, and I will see you for the next one.